Okay, good evening. Welcome back to the, to the interview room here at Little Caesars Arena. We're joined now by the Tennessee Volunteers. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Please remember to, to silence your cell phones. Please raise your hand for a microphone to be brought to you. And when you do ask a question, please introduce yourself and your media affiliation. Please note that the recording of press conferences on cameras or on cell phones is prohibited. From your left to your right, we are joined by head coach Rick Barnes, Dalton Connect, Zakai Ziegler, and Josiah Jordan-Jones. I'm sorry, Josiah Jordan-James. Coach, if you wouldn't mind starting us out with an opening statement, we'd appreciate it. Congratulations to Purdue. Um, both teams fought hard. Uh, and um, I thought our guys really put up a battle. We were playing against a, a guy that has a unique game, certainly. But uh, I think Matt Painter has done a great job with uh, continuing to build this team and grow them in areas to give them a chance now to be part of a Final Four and play for a national championship. And uh, not just what he does uh, when he posts up, the way he really gets your defense distorted and everything, but the way their team knows how to get it to them different angles, different times. and uh, But uh, again, just congratulations to them. Uh, uh, I, I can't tell you how much and how special this team was uh, for us as a coach and staff to coach. And the tough part is when you know where we started five years ago with Josiah James and Santiago Vestavi and then with the class coming in behind and where we are today to where I think when people think of college basketball, they know that Tennessee is going to be in the fight. And uh, the hardest thing is when it ends and then we have a special year with a special guy like Dalton coming into the program. Uh, certainly, I've said no one's changed our program more than uh, Zakai Ziegler. His DNA's changed everything. But uh, that's the tough part of where we are right now. Uh, uh, just a blessing of having a chance to be with a group of guys that they set out with. Uh, they wanted to do, uh, obviously, win a national championship, play on Monday, and uh, I can tell you this, when they look back on it right now, it's very difficult, but they'll look back and know that uh, they went after it and should have no regrets. And uh, again, I wish I could make it the outcome different for them, but uh, the fact that God's blessed me with the time I've had with these guys is something that I wish every coach could enjoy. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Uh, <laughs> coach, just what about the way the game was officiated? How difficult you know, was it to I guess to t coach your guys on how to d try to defend Edie with the way the game was called? Well, one, you, you've got a very unique player in Zach Edie. Very unique. And uh, it's a hard game to officiate. Um, the space on the court is so important. And uh, depending on how a guy gets there and how you try to keep him from getting there and the effort that goes into that uh, oftentimes can – get the one guy in particular there out of position where he can maybe help on some other different things. But uh, he, he's an extremely uh, physical player, uh, does a great job uh, wedging with his body. Uh, I, I thought all along uh, his misses are the hardest thing to defend because, uh, you know, he does lead strong when he, he'll, he'll bounce you off and try to create a crack and step through it. That's where he's improved so much with his footwork. But uh, I think it's hard for officials because there's not many guys like that. And uh, it's, the game has changed so much through the years. And whether you stay in the lane three seconds or you don't, uh, if you don't ever get out, it really distorts everything. And I'm not saying he did or he didn't, but watching tape, it's a, it, it, he's a difficult guy to officiate. I can tell you that. And he's a, an extremely difficult guy to guard. Uh, and uh, because of, again, knowing where he wants the ball, and he's got a group of guys around it that know how to get it to him at the right time. And as much as you try to scheme to get guys down there to try to take some space away, and all you can do is go down and dig at it and try to help before I uh, hope you can come up with some deflections. And we fouled him. I haven't even really looked at the stats. But uh, it's hard. It, again, I can just tell you he's a, he's a difficult guy to guard against. but. He's a difficult guy for referees to officiate to, and I don't care what any of them says. It's, he's a hard guy to do that with because he's a unique guy in terms of how he, how he plays. We'll stand the right side here in the second row. Uh, Terry Davis, Tri State Defender. Hey, Coach, I know it's not the way you want the season to end, but how proud are you of the guys the way they could have, they fought all game, they coming back and forth. They could have, they had multiple chances to turn the outcome out and how they fought all year. Well, we've had a group of guys that, that have done that, and it goes back. If Again, I said I'm just thankful that God brought these guys into my life because I, I truly have enjoyed going to practice with them every day and 
even days when they maybe weren't at their best and I'd get after them a little bit, they, they responded. And, and I, I go back to where we were five years ago and uh, what Josiah and Santi uh, did to, uh, and where they started, where we are today. They left it so much better than they found it. And Zakai certainly has made an unbelievable impact. But Dalton coming in and uh, having a, just a year that will be hard, uh, I mean, think about it, just out of nowhere. I mean, nobody expected it. But this group of guys, if you if you knew their families, if you knew their backgrounds, I think that – and, and Jemai Meshack, I mean, he's he's been a big part of it. And Jonas had a tough day today, and, and nobody, nobody hurts more than he does. And uh, But uh, we got a special group of guys. And uh, I just – again, uh, when you have a special team, that's what makes it so hard when it ends because uh, you just wanted so much more for them. Third row here on the right, please. Garrett Pog, FS Sports. Uh, there's some buzz on Twitter with how Dalton Connect has, has raised his draft stock pretty dramatically over the past month or so. If there was an NBA team interested in taking him, what would you say to them? Well, he's only getting started. He's just getting started. I mean, he, he came to – I mean, offensively, he's – I mean, he's going to continue to get better there. And he's, you know, he's a, what I would call a flamethrower. You know, he, he gets going, he, he gets his shot off. You're not going to affect him with it. Defensively, he's, he's, he's got to, he knows he's got to get better there. But um, I think he would tell you that no one's asked him to maybe do it as hard as we did this year. And he responded well. And and when we have some guys that maybe aren't having the, the days that you want them to have and more falls on him offensively, uh, I'm really impressed with his cardio toughness and the way that he, tries to fight through and people trying to make him guard, which, you know, people are going to do that too, screening him, doing all kind of things. But he's, he's, he's a young 22-year-old kid that really is just getting started. And, uh, but he loves the game. He works at it. And uh, it's going to be fun going forward to watch how much he improves. Move it over to the left side here in the second row in the middle. Josh Orsch, fan-sided. Coach, 31 shots for Dalton tonight. How would you assess the the balance for your team offensively and and the game kind of turning into a mono e mono at times between Dalton and Zach? Well, again, I go back. We know our players, and you know we read them. I think we know how to read them. And um, when he gets it going, and like Zakai said, we've seen him do that. Um, uh, would I like to have more at the rim at times to try to put more pressure? Absolutely. But uh, we weren't getting that early. And when we struggle like that, we're fortunate that we have a guy that can go do what he can do. And we we're trying to move him around, do some different things with him. And they were obviously working hard and trying to keep him from getting it. And uh, But, uh, I mean, we go in the game looking for balance. But if guys aren't getting it done, we, we had a guy that we could re rely on. And, do you want to do that? You really don't. But when he gets it going, we want it, we want him to do what he does, and our players understand that. But uh, uh, and they they worked hard at that. But again, would you like to have more balance, some inside, more from those guys? Absolutely. Move the front row here on the right side. Larry Leach from AP. Dalton had a couple threes late in the game. Three minutes left. Two minutes left. Uh, was it something Purdue did, or did they just not fall? You saw the ones he missed? Yes. Yeah, I think he, he just – no, I, I, I can assure you that they're not going to affect him on his threes. I mean, I haven't seen anybody all year really affect him too much when he's out there. Uh, if anything, it was the fact that a lot had seemed to be put on him because, uh, again, we weren't getting the balance that, that, we, that we'd like to have. But uh, uh, he, he had some looks at it and, uh, and uh, just didn't go down for him. And, and they're a good. They're a really good defensive rebounding team, and uh, a good offensive. They know when Edie's going to shoot it, and they start wedging in there. And uh, but uh, Dalton offensively can do a lot of different things, and uh, especially with so much attention put on him, and he's not afraid of the moment. And that's the one thing that I think I probably learned after the our very first game against Michigan State uh, ex exhibition that. Because he surprised us all, and what we did realize then is that he wasn't afraid of the moment. Left side coach in the second row. Wes Rucker, 24-7 Sports. Rick, I think you all have lost to Purdue twice this season by a total of 10 points, and they've shot 81 free throws, and you all have shot 41 in those games. How difficult is it to beat a team when those numbers are what they are, however they get there? Well, it's, it's hard. And, uh, I, I mean, I can go back and uh, – 
we can all have what we feel about. I've been doing this a long time, and I was talking earlier about it. I mean, there's different ways you can foul in this game. There's different ways you can get fouled. And uh, I've always felt that through the years, uh, we lost an NCAA game years ago where we were playing against a team that was every touch foul on the perimeter was being called, but the physicality inside wasn't. And my comment during that game years ago was, are we going to call it different inside, outside? And it's kind of changed a little bit. It's kind of gone the other way where uh, some of the contact that's allowed on the perimeter is more so than it used to be. And inside, it's pretty much, uh, you know, it's, it's physical. It is. And somebody said it the other day, and it's true, our, our game is more physical than the NBA. I mean, it's not even close. It's not even close with the physicality that's in our game today. And, uh, uh, and I don't have a problem with it. I mean, people would always say that, you know, we're real physical, but there's a fine line there uh, that, that goes with it. And, and, uh, but uh, that, that's when you look at it and see, and, and, and I said it before coming in that I thought that the game there was officiated different, and it was there. I mean, some of the perimeter touch fouls in Maui weren't called today, and, and I don't think they should have been. But I don't, think, I don't think they should have been called in Maui. But there's a difference in officiating at the start of the year to the end of the year. And we all know it. Everybody knows. I mean, I was on the rules committee for five years. We talked about it. And uh, but again, both teams played their hearts out. And again, I'm not complaining about the officials because I just you just asked me a question. I think it's a very hard game to officiate. And uh, sometimes it's hard for players to adjust to exactly how it's going on because it, it, it's a tough game to officiate, especially when you have a unique player like Zach, a guy like Dalton. I mean, on the perimeter. Uh, you know, he was getting pushed around a little bit too. But uh, that's where, again, I think it's uh, – and, and officials, believe me, it's a hard game to officiate. As much time as I spent on the rules committee and know how hard they work at wanting to get the game right. And, they, and again, they would all say this time of year they want players to decide the game, which they should. But still, there's certain rules of the game that always have to be administered, whether – whether or not we like it or not. I'll see on the left side, Joe, fourth row. Joe Reichshorn from The Athletic. Rick, you mentioned uh, Jonas. And what did you get from JP during that stretch? And was that, did that come down to just a little bit more physicality and ability to try to fight him for position, fight Zach for position? I think, I think it's a, just a, that's the one great takeaway from the day for him is, I mean, he got a chance to play more than he's played. And uh, I'm sitting here, sitting here thinking now, maybe we ought to try to use him like Zach Eady because he, he showed his physicality. And we thought that about him. I don't think he's ever seen himself that, as that kind of player because you watch him warm up, he wants to stand out and shoot threes. But the fact is he went in and, and battled against, you know, the player of the year in college basketball. I thought he, it was a great experience for him going forward. It, it's definitely he understands what it's about. And uh, But, again, Jonas was just having a really hard time letting Zach set up right in front of the rim. And we we couldn't get there to help any, any way about any any – just couldn't get there when it's that deep. The whole thing was trying to get him to start out further, try to keep him there so we could get those digs where we didn't have to come so far. And Jonas was just having a hard time keeping him out of the middle of the lane. Jump ahead to the first row here. Ryan Schumbert, Rocky Top Insider. Just what went wrong in those final five minutes of the first half? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure anything went wrong. I mean, it, you know, you're playing two teams. It's got a game of runs. We had one. They made one. and. Uh, again, there, uh, I thought we had a couple shots that weren't good, uh, but uh, it wasn't because of lack of effort. And uh, but uh, they're, they're, I mean, they're a terrific basketball team. I'm, I'm, when you lose to uh, Purdue or a Tennessee, I'm not sure you can say anything particularly went wrong. And I mean, I know every guy out there wanted to, to win. I mean, there's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser. We'll look back and and we'll say we could have done this, we could have done that, but we didn't. And and uh, we, we fought. I, I can tell you, we, uh, I told the team at halftime I didn't think we had played our best basketball yet. And uh, we, uh, but there we gave them those uh, downhill drives where they had a couple, I think they had six, eight points where they pretty much came in untouched from uh, the perimeter. And, and uh, that's not what we normally do. And, uh, but give them credit, they read it and finished it. Second row on the left. Yeah, Rick, uh, Gentry asked this Tennessee, and what you've obviously had some good teams, but what's made this group different, you think? And, and, and for you, does this moment feel different, you know, having gotten what you got out of these guys to get to this point before it ended? I think what made this group special is character. 
if you knew their families, if you uh, knew who they were, and, and I think the, who they are, and if you think about, and I give, I give my staff great credit in terms of the intel that they do when they bring people into our program. They would, I've often walked into a gym and sit down with a guy and watching a person they want me to watch, and I'll see somebody else play, and the coach will say, Coach, he, he, he wouldn't be a good fit for us. Our, our coaches know what we're looking for, the fit we want, and uh, these guys have represented that to the, to the highest degree. And um, as a coach, you know, you look forward to practice, and, and uh, you want guys, Dalton talked about being coached, that want to be coached. And when you have something that you know is special, and when it comes to an end like that, really, you, it's, as tough as it is, you, and it, we'll sit back, or I certainly have all year realized how blessed I've been to have this group of guys. And it started with, as I mentioned earlier, with Josiah and Santi. And and it's just uh, Jemai Meshach and Z. I mean, if you just, if you all knew these guys the way we, we, we do and how much they care, it's, uh, um, I've been able to do it for a long time, and like next year, maybe you have another team that can do it. Those seniors don't get another crack at it. That's why I'm glad that we accomplished. And, and there's no doubt, in, and I'll, I'll tell you, there's no doubt in my mind that we thought we had a team that could win the national championship. And uh, and I and I still believe that. But we ran up against a team uh, that's going to get ready to have a chance to play on Monday. They'll have to win another one to get there, but they're certainly – and you have to admire the fact that they lost to, what, a 16 seed and turn right back around. That's what that's what college sports is about, is the character of these kids that – and make no bones about it, they're kids. And uh, our job is to teach them. And, uh, and like I said, I just wish more people, more coaches and, – and every coach talks about their team. I know what a special group we had, and I wish more – Coaches had a chance to have guys like this, and some of them do. Not, not that I'm not saying anybody else does. It's just that we've got a special group of guys, and and uh, I hate it for them today that we maybe weren't at our very best. But I do know that we fought the entire time. Thanks, Coach. We'll take one last question on the right side here. Uh, Coach, just a uh, uh, Denny Cap AP broadcast. Just taking the officiating whistles completely out of the equation. How proud of your guys on the interior were you the way they battled with Zach and, and battled for the glass I know you came up short on the glass but um, obviously it was a, a tough matchup all around yeah I, I really am proud of it and again I, again I want to be I, I'm not blaming anything on the officials I'm not I just I mean he I, I don't want you to think or anybody to think that it's it's because uh, I wouldn't ever do that until I watched the tape myself and saw what I wanted to see and but uh I'm, I'm proud because we knew we'd already played them and uh, we knew what to expect. I was I was a little surprised at the start of the game that they didn't run. I mean, down in out in Hawaii, you know, it was an up and down game, and I think they felt like that uh, Matt wanted to go through him all day. I mean, you look at the uh, three point shots. You know, we were obviously aware of, of his supporting cast because we knew, and they made a big one when they needed to. There's a big three that they made there in, in the last couple minutes. But we knew they were going to – once the game settled in, we knew. I mean, it was very simple. They were going to come down and pound it in there. And I knew that our guys would fight. Uh, I, I think Jonas fought as hard as he could. I really do. And I think that Tobey fought as hard out, JP. Even Jemai Meshack, when he was down there that one time, uh, he, like I said, he's a unique guy. But uh, I'm, I'm, I really am proud of the effort. And, uh, uh, I mean, we still had a chance uh, – all throughout, and uh, but uh, a big play really was the block too. I mean, Edie made a great block. That was, a, I mean, if we'd have gotten two right there, that I think it'd have been a one possession game. That was a big play, and you got to give him credit for that. I mean, he he stayed with it. But uh, again, I wouldn't trade our guys for anybody. Thanks, Coach. Right, we thank appreciate you. all your time.